uh, so this is what happened. Markets gap down today because uh, the non-farm payroll numbers came, which apparently U.S. companies are still providing solid uh, jobs. And market didn't like that. And you would be surprised why, if the economy is solid, why the financial markets don't like that. All right, guys, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Choppy Market. Up 2%, down 3%, up 4%. Uh, so this is what happened. Markets gap down today because uh, the non-farm payroll numbers came, which apparently U.S. companies are still providing solid uh, jobs. And market didn't like that. And you would be surprised why, if the economy is solid, why uh, the financial markets don't like that. But the reason for that is the Federal Reserve system is tightening the financial system, that uh, they want to increase interest rates and they want to uh, let go of their balance sheet. And uh, they do it until the economy starts getting hit really bad. And when the job market is strong, it means that the feds, ha you know, still, you know, can use their ammunition, you know, better and better and better without being concerned of putting the economy into a big recession. So that's why the market got being down on the good news. And the reality is the economy shouldn't be too good. That's the problem that we had after, you know, pandemic recovery was that it was just way too good. People didn't want to go to work. Everyone had so much money and, you know, spending was really, really high. And that's, they don't like that. And there should be always a little bit of a slack in the job market. Otherwise, you know, the cost of employment just keeps going up. You know, Starbucks and McDonald's, they can't find people and they have to pay more and more. Anyways, uh, so good news brought the mess, uh, market down. Tesla had their uh, news that Elon Musk wants to let go of 10% of the staff. Obviously, this is a leading indicator. Probably the sales are down, the cost is higher. He probably blew up some money on Bitcoin and stuff. And uh, you don't you don't know how he's running that company. But from the tweets that he sent, that everyone has to come back to the office. To you, I don't want anyone phone it in. That was very obvious that uh, he's under pressure. So Tesla was gapping down six seven percent and uh, opened really strong at the open. And I did a one minute opening range break up on it, but I took a, sm a smaller share size. Like a couple of hundred, I think of hundred. I think it was hundred because you know this is a stock that was gapping down, and I really, really didn't want to take a big si uh, size on something that is gapping down. It wasn't really strong, so popped up above the VWAP. I added more, so that turned out to be a very nice uh, one minute to pin range break up, and I had a decent, a small profit on it. And you know, I, I think it was hundred, yeah. So like seven hundred sixty dollars I made on that, and then. <clears throat> Uh, you know, added popped up, and that that was it. I got out completely, and then suddenly lost the weave app. And it, on a five-minute chart, if you look at the five-minute chart, it uh, turned out to be a five. This is what we call it uh, engulfing uh, pattern. It means that the second candlestick is actually overlapping the first bullish candlestick. So that was a bullish candlestick, and then the second one was a bearish candlestick, which was overlapping on that. So that's uh, for a stock that is gapping down. That's usually a very very good sign. So it put, it potentially could be a five minute opening range breakdown. So I flipped my position uh, bigger on the short side, and I didn't stop. I put a stop loss at the Viva because that's a huge stop. So my stop loss was a little bit above this moving averages. If you started seeing some uh, bullish price action, I would have got out of it. So the risk to reward was you know fairly smaller for me. And someone uh, someone asked, uh, how do you? Uh, uh, how, why did you get there? You know, why did you chase it? Because these two candlesticks were so bearish, and you can't see it now. But, but when they're alive, the candlesticks, you can see easily how they're ticking down, and you know, you can see the downward pressure on it. So when you look at them live, that's why I have this red line on my chart. It tells you a lot at the battlefield. So yeah, that was short at 7:30, and it went all the way up to 7:16, and eventually bounced back and stopped me out at. Uh, yeah, at the break even. So, you know, that's the trade management that I think everyone should have. You start scaling out and then the stop loss would be at the break even. You don't let anything that you've already scaled out go out of you. And in this particular case, you really couldn't hold above the VWAP and the bounce back. Uh, you know, that's uh, that's just the yeah, bounce back down. I think it might slowly uh, uh, grind down or it might just chop around around here. Nobody knows that. Um, QQQ is down 2%. Uh, so Qs are getting hit the most because, uh, you know, they're, they're um, um, 
Uh, cash flow is always projected in the future. These are growth companies. And in the financial tightening, when interest rates goes up, the future cash flow becomes less valuable. That's why they are getting hit the most. Uh, so down 2%. And, uh, you know, it was really, really choppy. But I traded the TQQ for a couple of breakouts. I eventually lost money on it. So at the open, I tried to go one minute open range break up. But I went late. And then after that, I had to squeeze above the VWAP. You know, that is. But it, you know, it was like that. But eventually, I uh, made money. Uh, I, you know, I lost $500 on that. But eventually, it turned out to be a messy trade. So Tesla was the best trade for me. Uh, so that was it. Uh, let's see the amazing trades that other people did. Uh, so Apple, uh, this is a short that Apple um, uh, Thor did. Uh, amazing, amazing short, right? This is the pivot floor. And uh, he shorted up above the VWAP. This is not the type of trade that I would do. Wrote down and then he added back on uh, this pullback and then wrote down. This is amazing trading based on the pivots. Uh, Thor is teaching all of that in the peak capital and also in the advanced modules. That's the one thing. J the Jared did uh, call this uh, channel breakout on QQQ. I saw that and I wanted to actually get in. I you know chased it a little bit and took this one from 308. But uh, Jared uh, called this channel breakout. And uh, what else do we have? Uh, that's the same Apple trade. And I think uh, I think there was more uh, trades from uh, uh, Thor. I, I think he did another short on QQQ as well. All right, so that's uh, it for me. Brian, uh, <coughs> I know you shorted MU at the open. What else <coughs> did you trade? Yeah, no, I did um, the, the typical uh, my rising devil trade on am or mu i should say mu was down of all the semiconductors for some reason mu was down the most um never really found out why but um i just uh, could i saw it setting up as a rising devil trade which is a stock that's gapping down trading below the view app and also showing a lot of weakness going into the open those last few minutes so i actually had it I actually took it took it short in the pre-market because it was really starting to lose lose ground here it popped up to the view app, which is where I usually take my entry on uh, on the uh, rising devil trades, and I shorted, uh, added to the position there, and then it just started to sell off. Unfortunately, I did leave a lot of money on the table, but because uh, it sank more after I'd gotten out, but uh, that was a good trade. The other one I, I uh, traded again was uh, Anvax, another rising devil setup, and uh, yeah, so two two pretty decent trades. <clears throat> and I did I did jump in on Tesla I was a, you know I got I didn't get a great entry so I um I I you know I covered it fairly quickly and made a few bucks but uh, I didn't get I didn't get a decent move like you did yeah so uh, right. the rising yeah. devil uh, uh you know we're gonna have a presentation uh, about this trade book on for Brian so the companies that are down like NVAX is down 17 person you know and the pre-market it just keeps going down specifically brian looks at uh, the you know few minutes before the open and as you see is far from the VWAP. so the weakness is in the blood of this uh uh you know uh, stock so what it does every pop at the open you can just short on that and if this one really opened near the VWAP, you know you can essentially short it here mu as well down seven percent and you know if it was op gapping down uh, opening below the VWAP, every pop you know this is a good uh, short opportunity that's what called the rising devil why devil because it's all red and why rising is just every pop near the VWAP is a good opportunity to dump your shares on that as a short. And if there is on a short selling restriction, which often they are, on the pop you can easily get filled. Because uh, you can still short them on a short selling restriction, but you just have to you get filled in the optic. Um, <clears throat> that's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for us. We had a really... So one big announcement, guys. Dr. Kenneth Reed, he's offering one free coaching session with anyone who upgrades to Elite Annual starting... Uh, yesterday so if you guys in a monthly plan if you want to upgrade your account you get one uh, uh, free session uh, coaching session with dr. Kenneth Reed uh, you know on psychology and trader performance improvement so that's a promotion that he offered to us uh, very kindly uh, and he said that because you know I, I know that the market is really scaring people but this is an amazing market for uh, to uh, trade and you know traders can get some benefits about this and go watch his uh, Wednesday uh, psychology webinar he, he talked about that these cycles and he said that the, the ones that will survive these cycles those are the real traders and he, he said that I've seen all of this since 2003 
and uh, he said that you know your community is also one uh, sh head and shoulder above all other communities and i love that oh, oh, oh awesome so he loves our community he loves our style of teaching and coaching and that's what he's doing that so <clears throat> Yeah, so if you want any any one of you guys or want to upgrade your account, you can do that. Obviously, he can't just do that for everybody. But if you want, he offers uh, uh, coaching to people. If you want to work with him directly, I don't know how, what's his rate, to be honest with you. But I know many of our traders have actually worked with him directly, even for Peak Capital. I know that some of our traders are actually working with him directly. So um, that's it yeah so just uh you know if you want guys we're looking forward to see so many of you guys upgrade to lifetime plan uh, annual elite plan and uh, you get uh, working with dr reed for uh, for free for one session anything from you oh brian's book brian's book brian's book wait 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 that's the most important thing so brian <coughs> has a new book that uh, uh, it's called so yeah Brian book uh, profiting as an active trader is already new release in wealth management so if there is any of your wealth is left after all of these market connections <laughs> so and you want to manage it <laughs> you can go and the right uh, read this book and as a community we really appreciate a big support you know by buying it and writing an honest review it doesn't have to be five star it doesn't have to be anything that you don't believe in that but an honest review helps a lot to you know, because Amazon algos are so smart that they know that the traction that the users are getting with the book and reading. Even if you are on the Kindle, they can they they monitor your uh, read uh, page read because we get the report too. So they monitor the pre, uh, page read. So and yeah, if you can just write your uh, read the book and uh, you know write your honest opinion helps a lot. And we spend a lot of time <coughs> on it. We don't make any money out of it. It's more like a legacy, really, to publish. Anyways, uh, so we really, really appreciate that. The link, we're going to post it in the YouTube comments. And uh, hopefully, you can support us, the community. And uh, that's it. We are here. And I'll also post the link on my Twitter, if you are in Twitter and following me. All, All right. right. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, <coughs> Brian, anything from you? Do you want to talk about anything about the book and stuff? That's okay. That's that's it everybody just uh we already talked a little bit about the book but uh and have a great weekend um yep yeah. and uh rem remember what you say always try to keep it green uh going into the weekend and where market is starting to sell off here i'm still long uh sqqq which is basically short the market yeah yeah my Q's are uh trading in the range and maybe the hell uh break loose again and we're just gonna drop another four five percent let's see how it goes have a good weekend, guys, and uh, stay safe. See you Cheers. all uh, in the in Monday morning.